welcome. In this session, we'll explore Newton's method for estimating the minimizer of a function that has a vector argument. Let's recall what we did with a function that had a scalar argument. What we did was we produced a second order approximation. And we can do that for a function that has a vector argument if we take a look at the Taylor series for a function that has a vector argument. So let's consider the Taylor series. And what we'll do is we'll consider the Taylor series and we will assume an important thing. We'll assume that the Hessian of the function at each step that we're taking is a symmetric positive definite matrix. That is, it, uh, all of its eigenvalues are positive. So what that means is that the function is locally convex. And if you think of it, this makes a certain amount of sense. Because if a function wasn't locally convex, it wouldn't be smooth. And we're dealing mainly with smooth functions. So a smooth function is one that has a minimizer. A minimizer has to be a stationary point. At a stationary point, the derivative has to be zero. And that derivative has to be zero no matter how we get there. So that means that locally it has to be nice and smooth. And so we can assume that near a minimizer, this condition holds. So what this will look like is the, let's take the Taylor series for a W and we'll expand it around the kth estimate. So what we'll say is that the function is approximately, so the first thing is we'll expand around the kth estimate and then we add the gradient term, so that is the one form of the function at the kth estimate times w. So that's the zeroth order approximation. This is the first order approximation. And then what we'll do is we'll add the second order. Now the second order looked in scalar land like it was one half of the second derivative times w minus wk squared. And in vector terms, that becomes, and you can, you can look this up from multivariate calculus, probably a good idea, is that'll be one half of, we take the difference between where we want to understand the function and the kth estimate, transpose that. I'll put this in brackets, although we don't strictly need to, times the Hessian matrix evaluated at that kth estimate times w minus wk. So what we'll do is we want uh, to evaluate at wk plus 1. So that's one thing we certainly want, right? And then we also, we want wk plus 1 ideally to be stationary. And if we want wk plus 1 to be stationary, so we, we will require, so this is an, an, a requirement that we'll impose on this, is we will require, if that's stationary, that means that every partial derivative, that the partial derivative with respect to w of f evaluated at that k plus 1 estimate has to be the 0, 1 form. So if we, if we do that, when we, if we go through the algebra, and I really encourage you to do this on your own, because this is worthwhile, what we'll do is substitute these w's in, 
And what you get is this. You get, so the result of all of that is that the Hessian matrix at the kth estimate times W k plus 1 minus W k has to equal the negative gradient of the function evaluated at the kth estimate of the minimizer. And that has to be transposed so we go from a one form into a vector. So now what we can do is we can now solve for this, right? So let's, re let's remember that under our consideration, we said that this was a symmetric positive definite matrix. So if it's symmetric positive definite, it's invertible. And in fact, we can write the, the eigenvalues of this, the eigenvalues of the inverse are one divided by each of those eigenvalues. So we, we have a way, we can guarantee that that can be inverted. So that implies if I just multiply both sides by that inverse, the inverse of the Hessian times the Hessian is the identity, so I can eliminate that. And what I get is that WK plus 1 minus WK equals minus the Hessian evaluated at the kth estimate, inverted, times the gradient at wk transposed from a one form to a vector. And if, and that means that our iteration, if I add wk to both sides, I have our standard iteration. So let's observe some things about this. What we can observe is that this sets our kth step to always being 1. And it means that the kth descent direction is a symmetric positive definite matrix which will put n for Newton times the negative gradient of the function at the kth estimate transposed to be a vector. And here our symmetric positive definite matrix is the inverse of the Hessian at the kth estimate. So this just recall requires a brief recollection from linear algebra, which is that if a matrix is symmetric positive definite, then its inverse is a symmetric positive definite matrix. So this is this is Newton's method. And this is this alters the steepest descent. That is, we now have three ways that we can perform these descents. We could use the steepest descent. We could use a manually selected alteration by a symmetric positive definite matrix, which is probably going to be a diagonal for scaling. And we could do it automatically if we use the inverse of the Hessian at each step, at each uh, iteration. Let's visualize how Newton's method performs on the two quadratic functions that we've looked at so far. If we take that first quadratic function, which had a 2 to 1 ratio between the variables, Newton's method from any reasonable, uh, any numerically reasonable point will jump immediately to the minimizer. That is, it'll converge in a single step. And that's because the approximation, which is a second-order approximation, is exact for a quadratic. 
What about that quadratic F3, which had a steep valley and then was very, very shallow along the bottom of that valley? Well, Newton's method will automatically scale, and what it will do is steepest descent would go perpendicular to these contour lines. Our manually selected descent would go at a different angle and then it would oscillate. And now Newton's method will automatically descend. So what does this look like as an algorithm? Well, the same requirements that we always have and our prelude is approximately the same, but now we'll have to compute the Hessian of the matrix at each estimate. So then, while we're not converged, what we'll do is we'll set the descent direction to be, here I'm using MATLAB notation, is we'll take the H matrix and we'll solve the negative gradient transpose with respect to that. So that'll be our descent. Then we'll perform this step where the step size is 1, which is what is computed from the Newton's method, and we'll then note what our current value is, possibly for convergence or because the user may want that returned to them. We recompute the gradient, we recompute the Hessian, increment our iteration variable, and our loop is done.